Gather round, children, because today Uncle Chris is going to tell you a little story that illustrates why some people fail despite seemingly having all of the advantages in life and why other people succeed despite being born into the worst circumstances. I'm in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil right now in a beautiful apartment right by the beach. If you want to know how I live this lifestyle and how you can do the same thing, uh, check out Digital Nomad University. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Anyway, I was talking to a lady the other day who was telling me a story about how her son went to college in the US and he only stayed for one semester because he was the one Brazilian kid in a school full of rich American kids and he just couldn't make any friends. He was completely excluded by everybody. He was left out and he was miserable. So he only stayed there one semester and then he came back to Brazil. She said that her son was always kind of shy so it was pretty hard on him trying to fit in in an unfamiliar place. First of all, it made me think of myself because I was the same way growing up. I was the shy kid. I always had a hard time fitting in. And I was American and going to an American school, so I was basically the same as everybody else, but I always felt like I was different. And then I thought about when I was in college, there was a Brazilian guy that I had class with. His name was Bruno. Actually, he was probably the first Brazilian guy I ever met. And Bruno was super popular. Everybody liked him. Everybody thought he was cool. And he eventually became the student body vice president. That was a big school. There were over 40,000 students. So becoming student body vice president is a pretty big accomplishment when there are that many people. I thought of Bruno because he was in the same situation. In both stories, it's a kid coming from Brazil to go to college in the US where he is the only Brazilian among a bunch of Americans. But in one story, the guy couldn't make friends at all, and in the other story, the guy in the same situation became one of the most popular kids in school. I thought this was a really interesting contrast because the truth is that everybody has differences. Everybody is different from the crowd in some way, and especially when we're young, when we're teenagers, we really feel those differences. We really notice how we're different, and most of us, even if we're pretty normal in everybody else's eyes, we feel like we don't exactly fit in. But somehow, for some reason, some people's differences seem to help them, while other people's differences seem to hurt them. The two stories I told, being a foreigner from Brazil can be detrimental, or it can be extremely helpful. The truth of the matter is that each of us gets to decide for ourselves whether our differences are good or they're bad. And something like being from a different country, that's something that's pretty neutral on its face, right? Being from a different country really isn't good or bad in any objective sense. But each of us get to determine how we interpret it. So probably you've met some people in both categories. So probably you know a cool, interesting foreign guy, and you also know a weird, creepy foreign guy. There are two archetypes that we have in our head about foreign people, one of them positive and one of them negative. So if you're a foreigner living in a different country like I am right now, I get the choice, right? I can be the cool, interesting foreigner or I can be the weird, creepy foreigner. And the same is true with any other differences we may have, including differences that are bad on their face. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button to show me that you like it. Hit the subscribe button so you get all my new content and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you'll be the first to get it. And if you think this video would be helpful to someone you know, be sure to share it as well. Let's say if you're fat, for example. Being fat is obviously not a good thing. It's bad for your health, it makes you less sexually attractive, etc. But you still get the choice of how you feel about yourself and how you present yourself. This is something that you've probably already noticed in other people too. There's the cool, funny, life of the party fat guy, and then there's the weird, depressing fat guy. So if you happen to be fat for whatever reason, while you are doing what is necessary to rectify that situation, you get to choose how you present yourself and how you feel about yourself. You can be that cool, life of the party fat guy, or you can be the weird, depressing fat guy. It's completely up to you. It's kind of funny, there's this big social debate where one side is saying, oh, you should love yourself and accept yourself and everything about you is absolutely perfect. And then the other side is saying, you should be ashamed to even walk out the door, you're so ugly and disgusting, right? And both sides are half right and half wrong, right? Because you are a beautiful, unique human being who is created in the image of God. 
And as such, you should accept yourself and you should love yourself. But, but at the same time, there are a lot of things about you that aren't as good as they could be and should be improved. So you should love yourself and accept yourself while improving yourself at the same time. And if you accept either of the two extremes for your own life, if you accept that you're perfect just like you are, or if you accept that you should be ashamed of how you are until you're perfect, well, you're gonna be miserable either way. You have to take that middle path where you love yourself just as you are, but recognize that there is always the need for improvement. Anyway, I'm kind of ranting now. That's not really what I intended to talk about. The point is that you choose how you feel about yourself. And how you feel about yourself broadcast to everybody else around you. You might think that you're good at hiding how you feel about yourself. You might think that you're good at putting on a front, but I have news for you, it doesn't work. People see through it. If you are insecure, but you're pretending to be confident, it comes across as completely insincere and people will notice it from a mile away. And other people will almost always perceive you in exactly the same way you perceive yourself. It's like having a big flashing sign on your forehead that says, this is how I feel about myself. You should feel the same way about me. And you can spend all your mental energy trying to hide it, but it just doesn't work. People see through it. Now, successful people are not successful because they were born with certain uh, special abilities, right? It's not because they're smarter. It's not because they're better looking. People who are successful are successful because they chose themselves. The guy I told you about who had to leave his college because he felt so insecure because he was foreign, that guy was very intelligent, he was going to college for chemistry, and he was super good looking. He just didn't choose himself. Most people think that in order to be special, in order to be successful, you have to be born with some sort of superhuman abilities, but the world just doesn't work that way. The people who are successful are successful because they chose themselves. They said, I am worthy, I am worthy of success, so I'm going to reach out and take it. And those people who chose themselves, those are the people that we call charismatic. At its core, that's what charisma is. It's just the calm confidence that you can be successful. You know, a few years ago, I read a book all about how to be charismatic. It was by a lady who had decided that she would study all of the charismatic speakers and figure out what they all had in common. And she had this kind of scientific formula that she had figured out that was what she considered to be charismatic. And then just out of curiosity, I went and looked her up on YouTube to see her speaking about her book. And she was a terrible speaker. She was one of the least charismatic people I've ever seen. It's kind of funny for somebody who's studied this, you'd think she would have incorporated it into her own speech, but the problem was that she was incorporating it. She had just broken it down into this physical formula and it didn't work because it was, here are these physical techniques, but it wasn't the physical techniques that cause the actual charisma. It's what's inside. What's inside us broadcast to everybody else. And we can read all the books in the world about how to be charismatic, but if we don't feel it within our own hearts, then it comes off as insincere, as inauthentic, and all our attempts to use special formulas that we've got from studying just come off as attempts to mask our own inner insecurity. So that's it. If you want to be special, if you want to be successful, if you want to do more in life than being the average corporate desk drone or whatever it is that society is trying to push you towards to be just like everybody else, then you have to choose yourself. As I said in this video, you have to convince yourself that you are worthy and then you have to be willing to reach out and take what is rightfully yours. Now I want to hear from you guys. What are your differences that maybe you've let hold you back in the past? And think about it critically. How important are these differences really? Or have you just built up their importance in your own mind? Write in the comments, I want to hear your experience. And I really recommend that you do this exercise because when you write it out, it really makes it more real. And when other people see the same comments, they start to realize that everybody is in the same boat. Everybody has these differences and they see that the differences that other people are listing are nothing. They're completely unimportant. They should never hold anybody back. And when you start to notice other people's thoughts about this, other people's insecurities about their own differences, you start to realize how kind of ridiculous your own insecurities really are. And you can start to be amused by them rather than really taking them seriously like you used to. And if you want to learn how you can start feeling more worthy so more success can come your way and more other people will recognize you as somebody who is high value, along with two other personality traits that you can change to become more successful, check out this video now.